Qatar, a small independent nation covering just 4,400 square miles with a GDP of over $260 billion, is becoming the richest country in the world. Nestled in the heart of the Middle East, Qatar is surrounded by vast desert landscapes. How has this small desert country become so rich? Will its prosperity continue? Back in 1971, when Qatar gained its independence from the United Kingdom, it was a sparsely populated and impoverished country. It was considered one of the undesirable colonies of the UK thanks to its unforgiving desert terrain where summer temperatures soared above 50 degrees Celsius. Qatar ranked among the poorest nations in the entire region less than a century ago, but the nation's story took a dramatic turn. Today it stands proudly as one of the wealthiest countries on earth boasting a staggering per capita income of over $84,000. To put that into perspective, it's nearly three times the income of France and more than ten times that of Russia. Qatar's remarkable rise from humble beginnings to economic prosperity is nothing short of awe-inspiring. In the past, this small country relied heavily on its declining fishing industry and pearl extraction from the ocean as its main sources of income. Even though conditions were difficult at the time, Qatar is now a global treasure trove. It has become a global player via investments in properties all over the world. Doha, its capital city, is home to the influential Arabic media company Al Jazeera, with a net worth of over $85 million. When you visit Doha, prepare to be captivated by the seamless blend of modernity and cultural richness. Imagine a fusion of Monaco and Las Vegas, but without alcohol and gambling. There's no place for simplicity in Doha. Everything exudes luxury, grandeur, and skyscraper heights. But how did Qatar transform itself into the prosperous nation it is today? Many attribute it solely to oil, but that's only part of the story. In 1940, Qatar's first oil field was discovered, bringing some change, albeit minimal. The country's prospects were still limited because the oil reserves weren't massive enough to revolutionize its fortunes. However, a significant turning point came in 1970 when the oil giant Shell unearthed the world's third largest gas field, the Northern Fields in Qatar. Interestingly, at that time, natural gas wasn't as profitable as it is today. The challenge lay in the transportation of gas, which could only be done through pipelines. Unfortunately, Qatar was geographically distant from the regions where natural gas could be utilized. The prospect of laying pipelines to those places seemed unviable and exorbitant. At that time, the British weren't keen on spending money on their small colonies. However, a significant change was about to occur when Qatar gained independence in 1971. The new emir, already aware of the country's prospects, understood the key to transforming Qatar's fortune lay in harnessing the power of gas. In 1996, Emir Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani made substantial investments in research and development for a relatively unknown technology called liquefaction. Liquefaction involves converting gases into a liquid state, allowing for easy transportation in containers via ships and trucks, much like oil. We'll be referring to this liquid form of gas as LNG from here on out. This forward thinking investment paid off handsomely in the following years. Within a remarkably short period, Qatar began exporting natural gas to nations across the globe, solidifying its position as one of the largest exporters of LNG in the world. The financial gains were enormous, propelling Qatar from a struggling desert nation reliant on fishing and pearl extraction to a super wealthy country with booming infrastructure and a vastly improved standard of living. This transformation has been vividly reflected in Qatar's GDP growth from 11.3 billion in 1997 when the nation began exporting LNG to 179 billion in 2021. Many countries engage in the oil and gas trade, raking in substantial amounts of money. However, it's how they utilize those funds that determine their destiny. Take Venezuela as an example. They squandered their wealth in extravagant ways resulting in a struggling economy and a collapsed state teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. In contrast, Qatar chose a different path back in 1995 when Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani came into power. Since then, significant changes have occurred. Qatar wisely decided to invest its petrodollars both domestically and internationally, understanding that what they spent would vanish, but what they invested would continue to generate additional streams of income, even when oil or gas reserves ran low. 
To achieve this, Qatar established a sovereign wealth fund called Qatar Investment Authority, or QIA. This strategic body invested in the country's fortunes across diversified sectors worldwide. Today, the QIA is renowned as the powerhouse of Qatar, having excelled in selecting the right sectors to invest in. Its net worth now surpasses a staggering $461 billion, making it the 11th largest sovereign wealth fund globally. It's astonishing to think that this immense wealth belongs to a country with a population of just over 2.5 million, of which only around 300,000 are Qatari citizens. As we have just discussed, the QIA is of utmost importance to the nation of Qatar. But let's take a look at the magnitude of this fund. The Qatar Investment Authority has made massive investments in prime properties across major cities worldwide. For example, Qatar owns more properties in London than even the Queen of England owned herself. They possess a staggering 28% out of the top 15 skyscrapers in the city, while UK-based companies own just under 21%. But their reach extends beyond the UK. Back in 2016, Qatar ranked as the fourth largest office investor in the United States. They proudly claim a 10% stake in the iconic Empire State Building, as well as 20% ownership of British Airways, Heathrow Airport, and even a quarter of St. Petersburg Airport. Impressive, right? But their investments don't stop at real estate. Qatar is a major stakeholder in numerous multinational corporations. They hold substantial shares in companies like Volkswagen, Uber, Barclays, Shell, Russian oil giant Rosneft, and many others. The country's primary objective is to reduce dependence on the oil and gas industry and establish alternative sources of income for the future. Qatar distinguishes itself from other oil-producing nations by widely allocating its funds. While many countries indulge in luxury spending using revenues from natural resource exploitation, Qatar prioritizes investments that consider long-term sustainability. Even as the demand for oil increases, Qatar will continue to thrive and generate significant income through various other sources. However, Qatar's success extends beyond just oil, gas, and money. Previously controlled by Saudi Arabia, Qatar could not ignore Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. The new emir realized that to survive, they needed to establish their own identity and gain international influence. In 2003, when Saudi Arabia requested the withdrawal of US troops from their country, Qatar seized the opportunity and offered itself as a new base for the US forces. It invested a billion dollars in constructing large military bases, including the Al Udaid Air Base, which is owned by the Qatar Amiri Air Force. This base is located west of Doha, and serves as the headquarters for the United States Central Command and United States Air Force Central Command, accommodating over 11,000 US troops. Qatar has taken out a comprehensive insurance policy, so to speak. Additionally, Al Jazeera, with its remarkable success rate, consistently works towards achieving global influence. However, Qatar does have some shortcomings, such as poor labor conditions, the situation of women, and the lack of transparency. There are several areas in which the nation needs to improve. To become a prominent leader in the Middle East, Qatar must demonstrate its ability to function without a government and become a symbol of progress. Its smart investments and reputation as one of the most open countries in the region will undoubtedly help attract international attention. What are your thoughts on the nation's prospects? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next one.